Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is arguably one of the worst MCU movies to date. People have complained about how it seemed rushed, how the actors didn't seem like part of the world around them, and that the visual effects in one scene could look absolutely beautiful, and then in the next look like a cheap video game. And on the face of it, this seems to be true, but it's not the fault of whom you may have thought. If you look at MPC's work here, you can see the incredible number of components and the tremendous amount of detail that went into creating it. And Pixelmondo's work here is just stunning, incredibly beautiful and complex. But now look at the rebel fight scene. You can see that this guy here isn't actually fighting anyone. And when Zolom and Veb flee to the sanctuary, their animation looks all rough and jerky. Later on, we see Cassie running and that too looks rough and jerky. And then this guy here shoots a rebel, but nothing comes out of his gun. It all just seems a bit sloppy. In fact, the entire scene just seems confusing, rushed and messy. And if we look at some anonymous complaints from VFX artists that have been appearing online, we begin to see why. One artist who was employed by a VFX house who worked on both Quantumania and Wakanda Forever claimed that, In terms of priority, Wakanda Forever was definitely at the top of the list. All the money went to that. All the best resources went to that. It's understandable given the context, with Chadwick and everything and how well the first film did, but it did diminish the ability to carry Ant-Man all the way through. And another said, For Ant-Man, there were a lot of editorial changes happening toward the latter third and fourth of the project that were just too late. There's a point of no return. Why certain things were changed, why certain notes were nitpicked longer than they should have been, that's on Marvel. But it definitely did cause a lot of tension, turmoil, and weight on everybody. Another one of the biggest issues that the audience had was with MODOK, with a lot of people claiming that the effect looked comically bad. But if you look at the process that Digital Domain went through and the incredible realism they managed to achieve, and then you look at the end result in some of the scenes in the movie, you begin to notice that MODOK does actually look very convincing when he's serious or angry. But when he smiles, he begins to look comical. This is not because of a failed visual effect, but because of the way the actor chose to play the part and the way that Marvel decided to portray the character. And this is the main reason for MODOK's bad reception. MODOK is a character with a massive head. Had he been played as a serious, angry character, it would have been funny to poke fun at him, but there is little or no humor in poking fun at something that, by itself, is already comical. And lastly, there's the problem of the actors not seeming part of the world around them, and this generally occurs because of two main reasons. Firstly, they didn't really know what the world around them was going to look like during principal photography because a lot of it hadn't even been designed yet. This meant that they couldn't really use light stage LED screens to cast interactive light onto the actors and instead had to mainly use blue screens which cast a bluish hue that has to be corrected. This led to scenes like this desert scene. Here the actors have shadows on the left suggesting they have a light source to the right and yet we can see they have two suns that should be lighting them from behind. And then, here, there's a distinct difference between background and foreground. And here, this massive bat-like creature flying in front of a direct light source seems to have no effect on how Michelle is lit. The second reason for the actors not seeming part of this world were the interactions between the actors and the things that were going to be CGI. Let's go back to the same desert scene we saw before. Here you can see that Michelle didn't react at all to all the dust that was being thrown towards her. And this was because during principal photography, she didn't know that it would be. Another lack of interaction is this glowing blue rope in the rebel fight scene. Here, they should have used a luminous blue rope on set so that it could cast blue light on the actor and then the digital rope would have looked like it was actually tied around her instead of looking like it was painted over her. And yet another lack of interaction is when their masks go up or come down. If you had something open or close, so close to your face, you would have some sort of physical reaction, a head movement, a blink, or a slight flinch. But there's nothing. And this is because of either a lack of direction on set or a lack of knowledge that the mask was indeed going to open or close at that moment. So it seems that Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was rushed and uncared for. Just a quick side project, just a way to cash in on the popularity of the previous movies. And also a way to set up Avengers The Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars in an attempt to emulate the success of Endgame and Infinity War. 
for another big Marvel payday. Another comment from a VFX artist who worked on the project sums it all up pretty well. I think there was so much potential for this story, for the visual effects in general. I think the movie is getting the reviews it's been getting because Marvel is doubling down as much as possible on constricting quality. They're squeezing blood out of stones.